Bridgetopia, a world with peace and justice. Bridgetopia, a world where everyone's rich. I was born in Russia, moved to Canada when I was six, went to school in Canada. I first uh, found out about Bitcoin uh, back in 2011 and when I was still in high school. I fairly quickly got interested in it and um, started doing a lot of things in the Bitcoin space even as I was in high school and went to University of Waterloo, studied computer science. Then uh, about four months into that, I saw a Bitcoin price going up to about uh, $250. I realized, you know, this is actually a really interesting thing. Once in a lifetime opportunity, so I figured I would take, at the time, thought would be four months off to go work on Bitcoin projects. So I uh, yeah, then went around, uh, talked to a lot of people that were doing different things in the Bitcoin space, went to US, Europe, um, eventually found people that were working on uh, this sort of concept of uh, Bitcoin or blockchain or crypto 2.0. Shortly after that, I uh, came up with the idea for Ethereum. Richtopia, a world with peace and justice. So the idea with Ethereum was uh, that there is this concept of uh, kind of blockchain 2.0. The idea is that you can use a blockchain technology that underlies Bitcoin, the currency, for a lot of applications other than just currency transactions. So people were interested in doing different kinds of like contracts on the blockchain, recording different things, insurance, crowdfunding, keeping track of like registries of different things and a lot of other applications. But the problem is that all platforms that were available at the time were all trying to target either one particular application or a very small number of applications. With Ethereum, the idea that I came up with was that instead of trying to just support a small number of applications, you have a blockchain protocol that has a built-in programming language. So the idea is that instead of the protocol trying to support some specific set of applications, you have a programming language, and whatever people want to build, they can essentially build it on top. So the idea is to create a blockchain platform that's kind of as flexible as possible and lets people use it for as many different things as possible. Richtopia, a world with peace and justice. There is a few different areas that people are doing things in. So there's a lot of different financial applications ranging from like payments to financial contracts to insurance, crowdfunding, different ways of kind of managing funds, escrow, exchange. Outside of the financial space, there's a, a lot of different applications. Like there's some that are trying to do things in the supply chain area. So kind of keep track of where products are as they go through shipping, manufacturing processes and so forth. There's a lot of identity applications. So the idea is, uh, like, the very simplest thing you can do there is just to kind of sign in with Facebook without the Facebook type of application. So you have an identity that you personally control with your private key, and you can use it to kind of interact with other services, sign messages, and so forth, but there's no kind of one company that's sort of administering or controlling it. And then from there, you can start doing things like, you know, letting governments sort of make, let's, for example, make statements saying, you know, this particular identity corresponds to a person who's a citizen with some particular name. You can have a person make a claim about another person saying, you know, this person is very reliable, has a good reputation. I interacted with them five times and, and we had good interactions on e-commerce transactions or whatever else. And then you go from there. I think the most interesting applications are actually the ones that sort of combine the different areas. So you might imagine, you know, let's say one application that would use Ethereum to just keep track of let's say, yeah, product shipping uh, information. So let's say where products got shipped, whether or not it arrived at a particular place. You, you know, you might imagine some like a currency built on top of Ethereum, but then you can combine those two together. You can make, let's say it's called a smart contract. So like a program on top of the blockchain where, for example, if one particular a product arrives at some place and there's a record on the blockchain made that it did arrive, then automatically send some amount of money to some address. I think one of the nicest things about Ethereum is actually how you can kind of create applications in lots of different areas and combine them together in different ways. Richtopia, a world with peace and justice. There is many different blockchains, like there's public chains, consortium chains, and so forth. Ethereum has like very widely applicable. So like there is uh, a lot of uh, groups even that are that are building their own blockchain for one specific area. They're still interested in Ethereum for some for like other areas that they're not trying to aim at. So I could see Ethereum being kind of used very widely in a very large number of different areas, whereas you know most other blockchains are trying to target one specific thing. Richtopia, a world with peace and justice. It's still a couple of years before we're going to start seeing kind of any kind of real substantial change or even necessarily seeing exactly uh, 
what people try to use the platform for. Like even with Bitcoin, there were all the different things that people were using it back in 2011. And then in 2013, you saw a kind of larger and larger groups start using it. And at first it was kind of more fairly kind of radical political activists and so forth. And then you found, you know, normal people who just needs to kind of send money across borders. So with Ethereum, I think we're going to see some of like many different kinds of camps that find, you know, some reason to use it for different things. But in general, I do think that blockchain technology and Ethereum included does have like some kind of common values to it. So, you know, the concept of like decentralization, cryptographic auditability, accessibility for users and for developers. So anyone can use a blockchain application no matter which country they're in. And anyone can also develop an application no matter where they are. So like blockchains are the only way right now for, let's say, a 15 year old to create some new financial system. And I think that's really cool and it's kind of worth pursuing. And, you know, I think it'll really help enable the development of uh, systems that kind of combine aspects from different industries. So, you know, we'll, I think we'll see a lot of applications that are financial in part and social in, in part kind of combine lots of different areas, interdisciplinary, and I think we'll see a lot of really cool and interesting new ideas come out of that. Bridgetopia, a world with peace and justice. Identity is just kind of one application for blockchains, right? So you definitely can use kind of contracts on the blockchain to manage identities, and that could be identities for people, could be identities for organizations, you know, it could be identities for kind of decentralized organizations existing on Ethereum itself. But that's one part of it. Then the other part is, you know, all the applications, what people do with identities. So, I mean, I do see it as a kind of very holistic platform, and, you know, you could potentially see it as being a kind of base layer for very large parts of the internet. And it's, like, quite possible that the most interesting applications are only going to come once these sort of next sort of layers on top of it, you know, like identity, money, financial agreements and so forth start to exist on top just because it's uh, this sort of situation where kind of the more things you have, the more kind of synergies you can come up with and sort of the more powerful each part gets. Richtopia, a world with peace and justice. Scalability is probably one of our primary focuses. So blockchains, you know, all have this weakness that every computer in the network has to process every transaction, and that really limits the scalability. So, you know, you might have heard of, you know, the Bitcoin block size debate, and they're trying to figure out whether they can increase the capacity from about four transactions a second to about seven or eight. You know, obviously you can't actually run, you know, next generation of world finance on eight, four or eight transactions a second. And Ethereum is like a bit higher, but not much higher, and we'd like to come up with some way to kind of modify the blockchain protocol to where basically instead of every computer processing every transaction, you kind of randomly select kind of small groups of computers to process different transactions in parallel. And that way you can actually kind of scale out and process, you know, much more and actually handle the load that an entire global infrastructure for finance, identity, IoT, whatever can actually handle. So this is research that the foundation is uh, and, you know, other developers are actively working on, I think, We'll see kind of different stages of this come online. Richtopia, a world with peace and justice. I would say, yeah, first of all, if you're a developer, then take the time to actually try to develop an application. So, you know, start with that. That I think that also really helps you to actually understand what the platform is about, understand what the strengths are, understand what the limitations are and so forth. Um, on top of that, make sure you have a good idea of what benefits you're getting out of using a blockchain. You should be able to kind of stand up to someone, whether it's an investor or some or a customer or whoever else, and actually prove to them that Ethereum is better for this use case than an Excel spreadsheet. Like there's a lot, of, a lot of applications where the answer is actually, yes, you can come up with some very good reasons that are worth the transaction costs, but you know, you gotta, you gotta make sure you're at that stage. In general, you want to kind of focus on the application first and figure out what your application is before you really start kind of expanding the expanding the company. Be imaginative, I suppose. So one of the interesting things about Ethereum is actually how it enables kind of newer models for different kinds of economic interactions that don't necessarily look exactly like traditional categories where, you know, you have fairly centralized actors on one side of some markets, you know, lots of customers on the other side. Chances are you might be able to come up with some new way of doing things that people haven't even been doing before. 
rich topia, a world with peace and justice. We uh, really do actually want the platform to become more decentralized in meaningful ways over time. Is like initially the foundation was paying for pretty much all of the developments, but right now if you look at Ethereum, you have like eight different implementations of Ethereum. The majority of them are actually developed outside of the foundation already. So if we want to kind of actually change the protocol, then we need to agree among more people than just ourselves. In the long term, it's only going to continue pushing in that direction. In the medium term, you know, the foundations are going to continue funding research, it's going to continue funding you know, development of core clients, infra infrastructure, you know, the kinds of things that individual companies are, aren't going to pay for. And in the long term, we'll see. I think there's no one single thing, but in general, over the last like two months, I think we've seen a fairly rapid growth in usage, interest, adoption in general of Ethereum. Like there's a lot of uh, companies, whether they're doing things with Bitcoin before, whether they're just new Ethereum startups, or whether they're you know large established companies that are getting into the blockchain space, starting to figure out what they can do with it. Like we're also even seeing people starting to actually use it for different things. Like initially, like there's some fairly simple application beyond moving money around. Like there's been a, already a couple of uh, crowd sales, sort of crowdfunding DAOs on top of the platform. There's uh, people using it for different kinds of games. People are like doing live tests of, you know, different kinds of financial contracts. You know, it starts from here and then I'm excited to see what it's going to grow into in the next, you know, 6, 12, 24 months. <laughs> It depends on the day, actually. Some days eight, some days uh, a bit less. I'm actually surprisingly normal in that way.